everyone. Um, my name is Leah. So I'm a program manager from Azure Atos team. Um, so today I'm going to uh, give you some update, latest update of uh, our Azure Atos uh, since last year. Um, so this is our today's agenda. So first of all, um, just to uh, to give uh, Azure Atos overview uh, for some people who are first first time heard about the Azure Atos as a product. Uh, and second, day, uh, second item, uh, we're gonna uh, go through some recent product updates, uh, which we have been working on in the last year. Uh, and second, uh, and thirdly, uh, we're talking about some uh, semiconductor integrations, uh, which is the most important work items that uh, we've been doing uh, with our like partners. And last uh, agenda we have is a call to action. We're gonna show you some uh, useful resources so that you can bring off the table and start using that. All right, with all said, uh, so first of all, um, the Azure Atos uh, overview. So essentially about the uh, the Azure Atos uh, self. Firstly, uh, I want to make everyone think of like uh, Azure Atos, uh, as the name of says, it's a real-time operating system. Um, so that's a specific operating system that is capable of running on like the tiny small devices, like uh, we call them, normally we call the microcontroller devices. Um, so Azure Atos essentially is a product that uh, Microsoft acquired a company called Express Logic uh, three years ago. Uh, so the company has been in the domain for uh, 25 years or so. So it's essentially it's an established product for a long time. So when we think of this Azure Atos, uh, I would rather think of it's not only our like real-time operating system core itself, uh, but rather to think of it's a comprehensive suite for uh, your developing your embedded system or application. Uh, by that means, we actually, uh, in addition to the kernel of this Atos, which we call the ThreadX, we also have a few extra middlewares that can help to facilitate when you are building your device applications. But let's start firstly a, a little bit about the, the core, the Azure Atos ThreadX itself. So the ThreadX, as the name says, it's a kernel of the entire Azure Atos. It's a high-performance real-time operating system uh, with a lot of advanced features, such as like a preemptive threshold, event chaining, uh, as well as it's really in a high performance, which can achieve our context switching like in some microseconds. And it was like a really small footprint. So it could be like a minim minimally uh, with a footprint like 2K, then you can just run a basic like a StratX application on your MCU device. Uh, and then we have this uh, uh, TCP IP stack. Uh, we call it Azure Auto NetX and NetX Duo. So the NetX is uh, IPv4 and the NetX Duo, as the name says, it's a dual uh, TCP IP stack, it supports both IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, and recently, most of our um, new efforts and investments are happening on the NetX dual uh, stack. Uh, but we will drill in, drilling down a little bit deeper further for this uh, stack, since that's also the most related stack uh, that we gotta use to connect to our Azure IoT services. So Azure Autos File X, uh, as the name says, as a file, uh, file system middleware, that supports multiple uh, file system format like uh, FAT12, FAT16, and EXE FAT. Um, so that it's helpful if you are, uh, your application needs to deal in with some file systems. Uh, so the GUIX and GUIX Studio, as the name says, is a like 2D high performance graphic library um, that helps you to create some uh, you know, uh, applications that with rich graphics uh, underneath. And GUIX Studio is a Windows application that is free for downloading on the Windows Store, uh, which is like a lightweight Photoshop. You can use it to uh, quickly draw your 2D graphic directly within the um, this kind of tool and export it uh, the, the generate code uh, to accelerate the development process. Uh, USBX. Uh, USBX is for scenarios, like often for uh, embedded application that uh, it requires to uh, hook up with some USB devices. Uh, so the st this stack is dedicated for that. Uh, so it's also a high performance stack and it supports like a host and slave model, of course. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we have this uh, TraceX. Uh, TraceX is slightly different from the, the rest of the middleware. It's essentially is a uh, graphical application running on the Windows itself. 
uh, that helps you when you are debugging your device application uh, so that you can just uh, use this TraceX to, you know, uh, do some runtime tracing and the debugging uh, of the thread that you're running on your devices. It's a really helpful graphical um, tool uh, when you are doing your development. So overall, that adds up to our, uh, we call it Azure Atos. Uh, so this is like kind of our like three minutes nutshell of uh, this uh, Azure Atos is just for, you know, some introduction of the product itself. So next question is about, you know, where this Azure Autos is being used. Uh, as I said, so since this uh, Azure Autos or so-called Express Logic product has been in the field for like over the 20 years. So it really uh, depends on, uh, you know, has been deployed on so many different kinds of devices. And uh, uh, from our, re of our recent data, which we collected from a third party research uh, agent called VDC Research, it claims like uh, the total Azure Autos deployment today uh, worldwide is almost reached to like 10 billion devices. And if you look at the, the spectrum of the devices that are running on the Azure Autos, it really, I can say everything is, could be running on that. Starting from small things like your, you know, uh, your handband, like your, uh, you know, sport cameras, like this GoPro, uh, and like the printers and the iPhone. So iPhone is an interesting one because, you know, we know iPhone is running on the iOS, which came from the Apple. But what Azure Autos or Stratix is used here is essentially it empowers uh, the cellular and the, the Wi-Fi module within it. So essentially, you can say like a portion of this iPhone is also running on top of this Azure Autos. And all the way to the big devices like the, the Mars Orbit, Orbit um, so, which is the Azure Autos is used to, uh, you know, uh, empower its like a camera systems uh, behind it. So basically, you know, Azure Autos is widely used everywhere for different devices right now uh, worldwide. All right, uh, let's switch the gear a little bit to talk about, you know, that's actually the core, the, the reason why Microsoft is acquiring this company is to make it, it easier for those MCU devices that can be connected to the uh, cloud and uh, specifically to the Azure IoT services. So if we look at how there are ways to connect uh, devices, uh, MCU devices to Azure IoT, essentially we provide uh, several different ways. Uh, so starting from the scenario one is like, you know, if you're running a devices uh, that is capable of running Linux or Windows, uh, so essentially you can use our, uh, we call CSDK, uh, that can be running as application uh, within the, this kind of Linux or Windows box and use that to connect to our uh, Azure IoT Hub. Uh, and also if you are have a really resource constrained devices like the scenario two, so which means, uh, so it's a really small device. Uh, it doesn't, it has like a very little memory or flash on that. Uh, so in that case, you know, you probably not even have this uh, resources to run our, our real-time operating system on that, like your Azure Autos. But still in this case, you can use our uh, embedded CSDK. So the embedded CSDK is essentially our very lightweight um, CSDK uh, that we were writing from scratch that comply with the NSSC uh, 99 standard um, so that you can use it uh, by stitch up with uh, your own like libraries uh, like MQTT, uh, the TRS and socket, with us, uh, with, which are all required for connecting to Azure IoT services to be running our, our highly resource constrained devices. And then, of course, uh, our recommend model is like, uh, you know, if your MCU is capable enough for running at Autos, so you can use uh, Azure Autos plus uh, what we call Azure IoT middleware, which essentially is a wrapping layer. Uh, that we down on top of the embedded CSDK so that the APIs are exposed in the Azure uh, Autos flavor, uh, flavor fashion. So you can just use this IoT middleware to connect to uh, uh, the uh, Azure IoT services. The good thing is like uh, since uh, it was built on top of our uh, TCP IP stack, which we just mentioned uh, before. Uh, so every like uh, the NIST libraries has been taken care of by the NetX Duo. So we have MQTT TRS and the underneath socket uh, modules all there. So you don't need to find the right, right libraries in order to make everything work. And of course, you know, we want to meet where the customer they are. So some customers are essentially running uh, other autos like a free autos. So for that, 
Uh, similarly, we actually provide this uh, IoT middleware that for free autos, so that you can use your like a free autos flavored API uh, to connect to Azure IoT uh, without need to you know migrating to you know Azure autos, uh, just to make sure your uh, original devices are still can you know running smoothly by connecting to our services. So this is our four scenarios. Uh, depends on the on your capability of your devices. Uh, depends on you uh, the system you are currently running on your devices to connect to our Azure IoT uh, services. All right, now let's zoom in a little bit further into the uh, Azure IoT middleware for uh, Azure Autos. Um, so if you look at the the left hand side. So uh, in order to do that, uh, so firstly, you need to have the Stratex running underneath that provides the, you know, the basic thread um, functionalities. And you have this Netix dual stack uh, that we provided for you. Uh, and that in the light blue box you see here is like the extra uh, services that we provide for you, uh, which is part of this uh, uh, Azure IoT middleware. So that gives some extra um, value adds or features uh, like the OTA as well as the security features for that. So we'll talk a bit more about that a bit later. And with that, you can just uh, use everything uh, securely connect to our services. So the core part is like we want to really make the end developers or de device builders to just focus on their building their own application, uh, but without need to worry too much about the underneath uh, stacks, which we want to provide everything for you. All right, so um, next I want to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, our product updates since last year. So first of all is about the security. Um, so security is always one of our top top topic, and it's uh, probably it's one of the most important thing uh, for every device builders need to take care of. So from last year, actually, we collaborated with our semis as well with ARM to actually put the uh, PSA uh, into our like collaborations and our software uh, to support that. Um, so just really quick about the PSA. So PSA is actually our reference architecture from ARM um, that recommends, you know, how our MCU or like MPU devices uh, that are using ARM, to ARM architecture can run in a more security fashion. So if you're complying with the architecture recommendations uh, or like, uh, you know, rules from this PSA, so it can guarantee that uh, you are running in a secure environment. Uh, also, PSA provides our couple of like a different level of certificates for the uh, software platform as well as how well to be passed uh, so that, uh, you know, if you show you your devices or like your software has passed this PSA uh, certifications, uh, which means there's enough of level of security has been uh, baked into it. Uh, and for Azure Autos, so we actually integrate the, uh, the trust firmware for Cortex M, which is essentially our like a reference implementation of the PSA uh, by ARM. Uh, so the architecture we showed here is essentially uh, how we achieve this uh, TFM integration uh, with Azure Autos on top of the STM32U5, uh, which is the latest uh, Cortex M33. Uh, MCU uh, from ST Microelectronics from last year. Uh, and this architecture is based on the, the ARM uh, V8, uh, which support this uh, advanced uh, security feature we call Trust Zoom. Uh, so, but the core idea is like, you know, in the runtime uh, with the help of this Trust Zone and the TFM, uh, which capable, which actually on the runtime, uh, you can actually divide your application by uh, running in the secure and non-secure spaces. So for non-secure spaces, you can just run applications that doesn't require like highly secure, like those uh, logic that are used to connect to the uh, Azure uh, services, uh, and the rest of your device applications can be just running within the uh, non-secure space. For secure spaces, uh, for everything uh, that uh, you need to enforce the security, uh, as well as like the root of trust, uh, this kind of modules, uh, which essentially you need to run within the, the secure spaces. So having this TFM integration on top of uh, security, you know, 
uh, enforce the chip like uh, SM32U5 and running Azure Atos can make everything like possible. Um, so this is our like biggest investments uh, we have been doing on the security side last year uh, by collaborating with uh, ARM and our semi partners. Also, I think uh, one important thing is like the uh, the certificates for the security. Um, for that end, we have a, a couple of uh, new updates here. So the first one is our uh, the TOV certificates. Uh, so we are in the middle of like getting our latest uh, Azure Atos to pass a new rounds of like a TUV certifications. Um, so it's almost done. So we are publishing that. Uh, so if any customers are interested in getting that, so you can just uh, get in touch with us and we're going to provide you the certification package, which can be uh, you can use for your own application. Uh, and as we said, so uh, Azure Atos has just passed this uh, PSA certification level one. So the level one is dedicated for like software platform uh, for like uh, uh, systems like Azure Autos. So we just got that and you can find the relevant information from the link here. Uh, and also recently we just uh, um, posted our white paper, uh, which is a collaboration efforts between ARM and Microsoft. So Microsoft uh, used to publish this, we call it seven properties of highly secure devices. Uh, which we just provides a few like high level rules of how Microsoft think are uh, you know highly secure devices is, and uh, coincidentally ARM also has this uh, PSA uh, ten security goals. Uh, so basically, this kind is kind of like a joint effort to uh, compare Apple to Apple between these two like sets of rules and give some like high level recommendations from uh, both ends. Uh, on the application development, we also uh, published this guidelines for actually it's a more practical uh, guidelines that provides a set of like a do's and don'ts uh, so that you can use it as a reference uh, if you want to implement uh, your, uh, your your application in a secure way. Uh, so you can just follow this as a more practical you know guidelines for for that. Uh, and we're working on uh, getting the CSIP with another uh, you know. Uh, very widely adopted uh, security uh, certification standard. Um, so we are working on the CSIP uh, level three right now to get it uh, certified for the Azure Atos as well. All right, another thing uh, always, I think it's uh, kind of critical for any device application is uh, normally more often than, that, than not, uh, you want to have this uh, over the air, or we call the AK uh, OTA capabilities on your devices. Uh, so for that, Azure Autos just add the support for uh, the latest uh, uh, OTA service that from Azure we call device update service for IoT Hub. Uh, and right now uh, we are in the public pre uh, public preview refresh. Uh, we just had a new release on February this year. Um, so it, in addition to the public preview, uh, which we announced last year. Uh, spring, so we we add a few like enhancements and specifically used for for MCU devices domain is uh, the first uh, item which we call proxy updating. Proxy updating is a feature you can think of like uh, for devices. It's very common like uh, uh, in addition to the premium MCU uh, that you have uh, for your devices, you're gonna connect several other we call the leaf devices or peripherals to that prim MCU. So proxy updating make it possible for like not only just updating the firmware that is running on your prim MCU, uh, but also you can update your firmware on those leaf devices uh, with this feature in hand. So it's a really uh, useful feature that we just add in our uh, new release. Um, so this is our like our high level picture of uh, how we achieve this ADU uh, Azure Device Update feature within Azure Atos. So essentially, uh, we have a, a small agent we call the Azure Device Update Agent uh, that, of course, is also building on top of our NetX dual stack as well as the embedded CSDK. Uh, that gives the device the capability of connecting to, to this uh, uh, update service. Uh, and on the right hand, you can see um, so. Uh, the state data is actually transferred from the IoT Hub via the MQTT protocol. Uh, and here's a small like example of uh, what kind of data has been transferred that was including the, you know, the device manufacturing data, the device model, 
uh, as well as most importantly, uh, is a, there's a hash value uh, that was calculated uh, against the firmware that you uploaded to the service. Uh, so this way uh, we can guarantee like uh, during the transferring of this firmware from the uh, cloud to your devices, it's not breached or tampered with in the middle. Uh, of course, um, the, the actual like a firmware binary was transferred from the cloud to devices via the HTTP protocol. Uh, on the left hand, uh, essentially the uh, device update agent is taking care of everything like a flashing the, you know, the, the device flash bank, uh, which is normally the way that you are doing your AB uh, firmware update on your actual devices. Uh, so essentially the device uh, update agent is taking care of that once uh, it got the, uh, the latest firmware binary uh, from the cloud service. So if you want to drill down a little bit more, uh, you can find the link uh, in this page to find our uh, documentation as well as APIs uh, for that uh, module uh, to achieve your OT on your device. All right, with that said, uh, we're gonna um, show a short demo um, that uses our Renesas dashboard to achieve this OTA with the latest uh, uh, ADU agent. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Today I'm going to, I'm going to uh, demonstrate, demonstrate to the data experience of device update for our hub on MCU device. So the device I'm going to use today is a Renesas RSK65 board uh, that contains a secure feature on it. Device update for IoT Hub is in public preview right now, and Azure ITOS right now provides the uh, first-party support that has been natively integrated with our product. In today's demo, uh, we're going to demonstrate um, uh, the process in a few steps, starting from preparing the uh, firmware, generating the manifest files uh, that is required by the service, uh, upload all assets to the service itself, and then uh, add a customer device group so that you can just push the firmware to a certain group of devices. And eventually you deploy uh, the new firmware onto the device. Now let's imagine a very common scenario that requires OTA. Um, so you found a bug within your old firmware and you got this bug fixed and you want to push a new firmware onto it. Um, so here I opened this sample project which we prepare for the board and uh, it's up and running in this old version. And right now let's imagine uh, we got this bug fixed in the code and we're going to bump the version to uh, 1.1.0. Uh, and then I'm going to review the project to generate the new firmware uh, that will later to be update, uh, uploaded to the uh, device update for our Hub service. All right, here I've got my new firmware. And now it's time to generate the manifest file, which is also required by the service. Um, so to, to do that, I'm going to use the script uh, that comes together as part of the example project to generate the file. So I'm going to fill in the file name as the version to help the service identify uh, as the, the new firmware. And uh, since I don't have any leaf devices that connect to this uh, dev board, I'm just going to skip them. All right. So there's a folder that contains the firmware as well as the manifest file in it. So if we open this manifest file, it's essentially a JSON format file. Um, so one of the key things uh, about that file is this uh, um, SHA-256 value, uh, which keeps um, the firmware file from breaching between once the service is deploying the firmware onto the device. And there are some other information like the device manufacturer and device model in that file as well. Now it's the time to upload all files to the device update for IoT Hub service. So here I'm within the IoT Hub and I've created my um, device update service that has been bound to that. And then you can see there's an updates tab that uh, within this IoT Hub. And then here you can see the UI of it. And in this update tab, I'm going to uh, import a new update. I'm going to select our storage container. Here I'm going to use the one I've created before. And I'm going to create a new container. So uh, I can use this as a, as a container. So essentially it's a blob storage uh, here that has been created. Uh, and I'm going to upload it all the files, uh, which I've just generated. 
and upload everything. Import the update. Uh, and you can observe the uploading status uh, from this important history tab. So the device group is a very useful feature um, that you want to deploy a certain firmware into a certain group of devices. So in order to add this uh, device group, uh, add this de uh, device into the customer device group, uh, here I'm going to firstly let the um, device start running. So you can see the device is booted up and they're running on the old version, which is the 1.0.0. And now I'm going to go back to the um, editing the device twin, uh, which is essentially adding our uh, device group tag into the device twin. And save it. Then if we go back to the device update, UI and the groups and the deployments tab. Just add a group. And you can see uh, the customized uh, device group tag I just added that uh, shows up here. And I can just add this device. And set the right device class of it. And then we got this new customized group created. Finally, I'm going to deploy um, my new firmware. So I can simply find that like, the service has detected that uh, uh, the best update can be used for this customized group is the new firmware I just uploaded. So I can simply click this uh, deploy button. And uh, here I can specify um, the actual deployment time because normally you don't, just don't want to uh, break the, what people are doing uh, uh, and choose some certain time to do the deployment. But here for demo purpose, I just choose start immediately and then, then create this uh, deployment job. Now you can see um, the device has received the new firmware and download it. Uh, and after download, it will apply it from the second band uh, of the flash um, spaces that from the device and uh, put it from there. And every, everything runs successfully. Uh, then you can see the device uh, has been updated to the version 1.1.0. Which uh, we are simulating that contains the, the bug fixes of it. So, thanks for watching the demo. So, yeah, that's about the OTA feature we have. And uh, also uh, for learning purposes. Uh, so, we actually release our Microsoft Learning Parse dedicatedly for Azure Auto Stratex. So, Microsoft Learning Parse is a, a system, systematic way uh, for you to learn different uh, Microsoft products. Uh, and we just add this uh, Azure Auto Stratex as one of our first learning pass module within that. Uh, so essentially it provides or like a, up to like eight hours learning materials uh, in a very structured way uh, so that you can just uh, learn step by step. Uh, and we provide all the sample projects on GitHub uh, with all source code published for that. Uh, and one more good thing for that is uh, on that same GitHub ripple, uh, you can also find our latest book, uh, the PDF version book of the uh, real-time embedder multi-threading uh, using ThreadX, the latest, uh, the fourth version of it. So everything can be downloaded for free from it. Uh, and of course, uh, as part of this uh, learning parse uh, feature, you can actually win your uh, digital uh, certification badges after you finish all the learning parts. So everything is free and it can be accessible right now if you go to that uh, um, AK link from there. Uh, and this is, is more for uh, what we call the better together uh, examples. Um, so this year we actually collaborated with the foundation of the uh, robotic operating system. Uh, so micro roles is essentially our branch of the uh, roles, uh, which is uh, more targeting for the MCU spaces devices. 
So we, uh, by collaborating with the Rose Foundation, uh, we actually make the Azure Autos uh, integrated with the, the Micro Rose. Uh, so that you can build your robotic system uh, using the Azure Autos and the needs for that. So every source code that was also uh, published uh, uh, at the Micro Rose uh, organization on the GitHub right now. So if you're interested in building your robotic system, uh, no matter for your work or for your fun, uh, you can just uh, use that today. All right, so uh, last portion uh, we want to update a little bit up is about the, the semiconductor integrations. Uh, so as you may know, uh, so one of the key things that uh, we think can make Azure Auto successful or, you know, uh, reach out to most of the customers is uh, to via our semi uh, partners. Uh, so ST and SP Renesas and Microchip are like the four semi uh, big partners we've had like a business deal with. Uh, so that if you look at the link here, uh, you can find a test file which contains all the uh, the you know the device modules that uh, you can use Azure Autos for your commercial product uh, product products for free uh, by using those uh, semi chips. Uh, and the green ones here are the new um, the chip families uh, we added support uh, in the last year. Uh, so make sure you're checking on uh, those kind of lists and to see uh, if the devices you are going to uh, use to build your next uh, device, uh, you know, is in the supporting list. Uh, and we we are keep expanding that list for sure in the next uh, coming like semesters or years. Yeah. So here uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that, but uh, for ST. Um, so we are actually replacing the, the free autos, which used to be the um, by default uh, real-time operating system integrated with STSDK uh, and, and SCM32 Cube series uh, with Azure Autos in it. So right now, uh, the, so the Azure Autos is the defect uh, def is the by default um, system that was uh, uh, built within the SDK from the ST. Uh, and similarly for the NXP, um, so if you go through the NXP to build the SDKs, um, so uh, you're gonna see this option uh, that's sitting next to the free autos, which right now you can also add uh, the Azure autos uh, within your SDK so that you can directly use it. Uh, and also the uh, the Stratex uh, related features has also been added to the uh, NXP MCU Espresso IDE. Uh, so that you can use it to uh, debug your application if you're running on the Azure Autos. Same for Renesas. Um, so we've integrated uh, the Azure Autos into the Renesas, uh, their uh, software package, which is called a flexible software package, uh, as well as their IDE, uh, which is called e -Square Studio, uh, so that you can use it right now. Uh, the good thing is also, we've also added uh, the Azure Autos related examples into that so that you can directly generate your project uh, from the E2 Studio uh, that uh, contains Azure Autos uh, for different like aspects uh, of functionalities. All right, uh, the last portion is uh, the call to action. Um, so uh, about the learning resources, uh, first of all, uh, our first choice is always uh, recommend to go to our GitHub uh, repo slash uh, Azure dash Atos, where you can find uh, the all source code, every single line of source code we publish on that, as well as the licensing uh, files. And also uh, we have uh, two repository that contains our getting started examples for a couple of like uh, key hero boards, uh, which we've chosen together uh, with our semi partners so that uh, you can use that as a reference project. Yeah. Um, and documentations, uh, everything has been hosted on the uh, Microsoft Docs, uh, so which contains uh, every piece of like uh, the midwell um, uh, that was within it, uh, as well as the, all the API sets that you can just find at the reference from the, the Docs uh, website. Uh, IoT Show is something uh, you definitely don't want to miss, uh, which is uh, we publish a few series of like uh, um, a video uh, tutorials, uh, like. 15 minutes or 20 minutes long videos on the YouTube regularly. Uh, that covers pretty much every uh, aspect of the uh, uh, the IoT products, which of course, including the Azure Autos. So make sure you check that as well. Uh, and last, uh, we've already mentioned that uh, the Microsoft learning parts, 
uh, starting from the Stratex, uh, we're going to keep adding further uh, different learning parts for different uh, our midwells. Uh, the next one we're planning right now is to add this uh, uh, NetX tool uh, in addition to the Stratex right now so that you can keep further learning uh, around our product. All right, so if you want to uh, reach out to us, so for Q&A, we have this uh, dedicate uh, tag on the Microsoft Q&A, uh, which is for like questions and answers uh, about uh, the products. Uh, if you have uh, found any like bugs and issues, or if you have any like a feature request that you want to let us know, um, the recommended way is to use our GitHub issues uh, for different repos uh, for different middleware. Uh, so you can just submit your uh, issues or feature requests as issues from the GitHub. Uh, and last thing is about uh, the license and sales. So if you want to uh, talk with us about our licensing model and pricing, especially if you found like uh, the devices you are uh, using is not including uh, as part of the uh, licensed TXT file, uh, which we published on GitHub, uh, you can use this link to uh, let us know and we get in touch with you to talk about our specific license and the sales code for, for your devices. Uh, upcoming events, uh, yes. So uh, we've often like uh, collaborated with our summer partners to work together uh, to you know show up uh, our product on their events. Uh, a couple of them, uh, we're gonna have uh, several ST Dev Tool uh, this year uh, offline, uh, and Microchip we're gonna participate in their Design Week. Uh, but one of the most uh, important events this year we're going to participate is the Embedded World and the ARM Dev Summit. So uh, if you by chance also participate in that uh, meetings, uh, make sure you swim by uh, our booth and we can talk in details and chat about it. All right, so that's pretty much of it. Uh, thank you very much for um, spending time and listening to the Azure Atos product updates. Uh, that's it. Thank you.